In this particular lecture, let's go ahead and let's learn how we could make use of an object instead of using this particular single integer as a state in case of a reducer. So in the previous lecture, we had taken an example wherein we have used a simple number here as a state value. But when you work with real world React applications, typically your state is not going to be that simple. So you want to save your state into some kind of an object here. So let's learn how exactly that can be done. So there's one simple thing which you need to do here that is to replace this particular initial value of a state with an object. Now you could have an empty object here, but let's say here we want to have the value of count in terms of an object instead of simple zero. So here I'll create an object and here inside the object I would have a key as let's say count. And now I'll set the value of this thing to zero instead of directly having a zero there. But now the problem is that once we have updated this value here, over here we cannot simply go ahead and update the value of state just by saying return state plus action dot payload because this time our state is not just a simple number but instead it's an object. So here even before making any kind of changes here, I just want to show you how exactly we could update a complex piece of state like that, which is a JavaScript object. So in order to do that, I'll go ahead and go into the local storage and you could ignore the warnings here because we have to make changes to the code. I'll clear up the console here and over here, I'll just display how a particular state value is updated. So I'll artificially go ahead and create a state here. So I'll say const state equals and then over here let's imitate the same thing which is state is going to be an object. So let's say if we have a state in terms of an object which is let's say count. So I could say count and then let's have some value here of count as zero. So now what happens is if I go ahead and do that and if I say state here as you can see now we get an object here. Now the question is, what if I actually want to go ahead and change the value of the state which I have? So in order to change the value of the state, what I could do is I could create another object and first of all, use the spread operator to kind of spread all the elements which we have in this array. So I could go ahead and say dot 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 state and now what this spread operator does is that it basically creates another state which is a new object here but that new state actually contains the value of the old state here. Now let's say if I want to update the value of count here. So in that case, I would use the spread operator here. So dot 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 state comma. And then I could also go ahead and change any one of the values which we have in this particular state object. So here let's say if I say count is going to be one. So in that case, what happens is now this new value of state which we have actually has count as one. Now the question is why exactly would you use this kind of spread operator while updating the state which you have? And the reason for that is quite simple. So let's say we have a state which looks something like this and apart from the count, let's say we also have some other value over here. So I'll create another key here called a sum value and I'll set the sum value to one here. Now what happens is, Let's suppose I have the state and I only want to change the value of the count and I want to keep the value of this sum value as it is. So in that case, what I would do is I'll make use of an object here, then use the spread operator and then say state and then only specify the value which I want to change here. So out of these two values, let's say I want to update the value of count to two. So here I could say count as two. So what this does is that it will first go ahead set the value of count to two, and then it will go ahead, take a look at this object, and it will find that, all right, the value of count has been already updated to two, so it will not change that. So it will keep the count as two, and then it would set the second value of some value to whatever value which we had in the state. So let's run this and see what happens. So as you can see, the value of the count has been increased to two, and the sum value remains same over here. So that's the same exact logic which we have to implement over here as well. So in this case, what we simply have to do is while updating the state here, you cannot return something like this. Instead, you have to return an object. So what I would do is uh, let's keep this code commented and I'll create a new return here. So we'll return an object because now our state is an object 
And what we do is we take whatever the existing value of state is using the spread operator. So dot 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 state. And then I'll add a comma here just as we have done here. And then I want to say that, all right, I just want to update the value of the count which I have. So here I would say the value of count. So we have simply specified this key here. And the new value of count is going to be the old value of count plus the action dot payload. So here, in order to get the old value of count, which is this value here, I simply cannot go ahead and say count here. But instead, I have to say state dot count because that's what actually gives me access to the zero here. So once I have this, I simply have to now add the action dot payload here. So action dot payload and that's it. Now here, instead of simply returning state plus action dot payload, what we are doing here is that we are returning an object. And in that object, first of all, we are actually making a shallow copy of the existing object so that if there are any other values here, they get copied here. Then we are setting the value of this count to the old value of count, which we get from state dot count. And then we simply have the payload value from action dot payload just as before. So now this will actually go ahead and change the value of state here. Now in case of decrement, what we simply have to do is we have to copy the same thing and just replace this plus with a minus and rest of the things remain the same. So now watch what happens if I go ahead and hit refresh. So here we are still getting an error which says object are not valid as react childs found with keys count. So that basically means somewhere in our code, we are directly referencing count. And I guess that place is over here. So over here, instead of just having state, I have to simply replace this with state dot count as state is an object and you cannot directly render an object inside a react component. So if you do that and hit refresh, now as you can see, the errors are gone. And now you could increment or decrement the value of count without any kind of issues. So this is how you could go ahead and make use of an object as a state in case of a reducer. So this is still a simple object which only has a one key value pair. But in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's make use of a complex object instead and see how a complex object could be updated in case of a reducer. So let's learn about that in the next one.